Throughout the entire Bioshock series, we've had evil people, we've had evil villains, and just evil in general. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a list of the 10 most evil people that happen to live within Rapture and Columbia as well. This list is not in any particular order, so just keep that in mind. And if you feel that I missed anyone, which I'm sure I have, please let me know down in the comments section below. So with that being said, sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy the video. In at the number 10 slot, we have Dr. Yi Suchong. Now from brainwashing, or as they call it, conditioning, the big daddies and little sisters, which is actually extremely messed up if you think about it, to brainwashing Jack with the would you kindly and code yellow triggers instructed by Fontaine, to giving Jack a serum that rapidly aged him called Lot 111, and to forcing a young Jack to break a puppy's neck by using the would you kindly trigger. Those are just some examples of how messed up Yi Su Chang was. He didn't care about people, he didn't have empathy, all he cared about was science. And finally, he began beating a little sister as he recorded himself speaking to an audio diary. We heard this in Bioshock 1, and we actually had a opportunity to see it play out in Burial at Sea Episode 2. In my opinion, I'd say he got what he deserved when the big daddy took action and promptly killed Su Chong after hitting his little sister. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Number 9, we have Booker DeWitt and Zachary Comstock. There's so many horrible things that these two different characters have done that I can make an entire video dedicated solely to that. However, I'll focus on a few major and horrific things that they've done. From Booker's standpoint, he essentially sold his daughter, Anna, to get rid of debt he owed due to gambling and becoming an alcoholic after his wife passed away, to burning teepees with men, women, and children inside them at Wooden Knee, then to excessive violence to end strikes while working for the Pinkertons. Also, not to mention what happened at Peking as well. It's pretty disturbing stuff. Now, let's move on to Comstock. There's a lot to dig into here, like his racism, xenophobia, his white supremacy stance, and it's just an overall horrible, horrible situation, and he's just an overall shitty person. On top of that, he sees himself as a prophet of God, due to him being able to quote, see the future due to tears, and decides to essentially guilt trip a version of Booker to give up Anna. You see this towards the end of Bioshock Infinite. Booker, well, Comstock in this situation, really ended up turning into an asshole after his baptism, and that's honestly putting it lightly. There's a lot of other things I could have put on the list, but due to time constraints, I wanted to focus on these main ones. Next up at the number 8 slot, we have Stanley Poole. Now, you probably know my stance on him as a character, but he is an actual good villain. He's an actual good and evil character. And that's all I'm going to say about that. So, where do I start with Mr. Stanley Poole? Well, first of all, he caused the downfall of Dionysus Park single-handedly. He had Subject Delta do his dirty work by trying to convince him to get rid of the evidence of his involvement with the fall of Dionysus Park by rescuing, or harvesting if you choose, the Little Sisters. And one final thing about Dionysus Park, he feared that members of Lamb's Rapture family would tell her what he did. He decided to kill all attending Dionysus Park attendees by flooding it. Now that is extremely messed up. Also, not to mention, he sold Eleanor to the Little Sisters Orphanage while Sophia Lamb was serving time in prison. I personally don't think I'll ever like Stanley Poole as a character, not only because he portrays a coward in game, but of his actions and his overall character in the lore of Bioshock 2. So. I think he's beyond redemption, kind of like how Bridget Tenenbaum did some evil stuff, 
but at least she redeemed herself in game, if that makes sense, and that's why she's not on the list. And at number seven, we have Jeremiah Fink. God, what an ego on this man. Mr. Fink is one of the worst people you come into contact with in Colombia. Not only does he show blatant racism as seen in the raffle, but he essentially runs Fink Manufacturing off of slave labor. His workers live in a horrible part of Colombia called Shantytown with little to no food or water, little to no money, and essentially no healthcare. I made a video on Shantytown if you want to check it out. There will be a card at the top right hand corner of the screen now. On top of that, when his workers get quote unquote paid, they're only allowed to use their payments at Fink's store, that being Fink Manufacturing. Fink is a narcissistic asshole who thinks he's God's gift to Earth, besides Comstock, of course. Also, we find out that he worked with Dr. Su Chong on creating a protector for Elizabeth via a tear. This ended up being Songbird, and this also allowed him to construct and design Songbird due to him seeing Su Chong's work on the Big Daddies and Little Sisters, and knowing Fink, he wanted a piece of that for himself. And at the number six slot, we have one of the first actual quote unquote boss fights that we encounter during Bioshock 1, that being Dr. Steinman. Not only is this guy batshit insane, but the way he mutilates his supposed patients is downright disturbing. As heard by this audio diary, you can tell that splicing went to his head during surgery and he decided to continue with a surgery that wasn't scheduled and I'll play that for you now. For o silk and uh. The nose looks terrific, Dr. Steinman. Doctor? You know, looking at it now, I didn't realize how much your face sags. Scalpel? Excuse me? Scalpel. Uh, doctor, sh she's not booked for a facelift. Let's just come in here and... Doctor, stop cutting. Doctor, stop cutting. Get me the chief of surgery. Get me the chief of surgery now! Plus, as mentioned, the first time we meet him, he has three splicers chained up to a wall and is stabbing a fourth while reciting almost a prayer-like vigil, I suppose. Thankfully, we're able to take him out, but unfortunately the damage he's caused to those splicers, as well as many other patients, has already been done. Again, this guy is extremely evil and it just showed how bad splicing can actually be. Now in at the number 5 slot, I've made a video on this character a long time ago. He's done a lot of bad things. And for the sake of time, I condensed it down into this video. If you want to check out that video in particular, I'll put an annotation at the top right hand corner of the screen. All you have to do is click on it and it'll take you right to the video. But number five, we have Atlas and Frank Fontaine. Where do I begin with Frank Fontaine or Atlas for the matter? Not only did he take advantage of the poor people of Rapture for his own personal gain, not only did he mentally abuse Jack as a child, so that he could do his bidding with the would you kindly phrase when he came back to Rapture. Not only did he have you kill your own father, Andrew Ryan, but on top of that, in Burial at Sea, he killed Elizabeth after all the tedious work that he put her through. That is a lot. And that's not even scratching the surface of what he's done. That's some of the major stuff. There's a lot of minor stuff that he's done too. Anyways, Fontaine is a bad, bad guy and one of, if not the best villains we've seen and encountered within the Bioshock series. Let me know your personal opinions on Fontaine down in the comment section below, or you can tell me about Atlas because I'm genuinely interested in hearing your opinion. So thank you. So for the number four slot, I decided to put Reed Wall here. As stated at the beginning of the video, this list is not in any particular order, it was just the characters that popped into mind as I was jotting them down. So, not only did Reedwall become consumed by his own desire with the Thinker, but this 
made him turn on his partner, Charles Milton Porter, and turned him into the corresponding authorities to get him to become a big daddy. That's messed up. How evil of a person do you have to be to not only stab your partner in the back, but take all of the credit for the thinker and to consider the thinker entirely yours? To me, that is a shady, shady man, if I do say so myself. Not to mention how many times he's tried to have Sigma killed, whether that's through sending splicers at him, sending big daddies at him, blowing him up. There's just a lot of stuff that Reedwall tries to do to stop Sigma. Also, Reedwall was drunk with power and consumed by his own massive ego. That last part, the drunk with power and consumed by his own ego, kind of sounds like Jeremiah Fink, doesn't it? And ironically, they both have to do with manufacturing, technology, etc. So, just keep that in mind. We'll see if that turns into a fan theory here. Now, the number three slot hurts me personally, but I had to put him on this list. That being Sander Cohen. Now, even though he's my favorite character within the series, I can admit that he's one of the most evil ones at that. If you need one large example, just wander around Fort Frolic and look at some of the stuff that he's done. Now for a smaller scale. He's taken live splicers and molded them into plaster art pieces to his liking. That's beyond messed up. He's tortured people like Kyle Fitzpatrick, Silas Cobb, Martin Finnegan, and Hector Rodriguez, who used to be his former disciples. He then has you kill his former disciples for a quote-unquote art project for his quad tick. Now let's go to Burial at Sea. In Burial at Sea, he electrocutes Elizabeth and Booker because of their poor dancing and sends them to find Sally into a horrible, horrible part of Rapture, that being the sunken department store, I believe. Sure, he's a beyond memorable character, but that doesn't excuse all of the evil acts and evil deeds that he's committed. Again, he's my favorite character, but he is one, one messed up individual. Now the last two slots are kind of fitting, as they're the ones that led Rapture. So let's start off with number two, that being Sophia Lamb. Well, first off, she made Delta shoot himself right in front of Eleanor when she was younger, so, what a rousing start there. She turned Rapture into her own personal cult, that being the Rapture family. She tries to convince anyone to kill Delta on site due to him being revived via a Vita chamber and now wandering around Rapture looking for Eleanor. And obviously, she despises Delta. She twisted the views of once good people like Grace Holloway and Simon Wales to think exactly like her. Because, remember, she was a extremely good psychologist or psychiatrist. My apologies. And I mean, for Christ's sake, she tried to suffocate Eleanor, and she did for a little bit, just enough to stop her heart for a few minutes, just to make sure Delta's heart stopped too. She's a terrible person, she's a terrible mother, and she's a manipulative person in general. Good villain, I will say, kind of annoying slightly, but a good villain nonetheless. And now, in at the number one slot, we have the man, the myth, the legend, Andrew Ryan himself. Ryan became corrupt and decided to go against his own morals. As Rapture was going down, he began to try to tighten his grip on the supposed great chain of Rapture, but it only made things worse. From all of the mental mocking he did to Jack while Jack wandered around Rapture, to even using the would you kindly phrase against him exactly like Frank Fontaine did, to even murdering his best friend and right hand man Bill McDonough which is slightly justified because McDonough wanted to assassinate him to save Rapture but it still is horribly messed up and it doesn't excuse the fact of what he did and not only that but he murdered innocent people or just people that he didn't like for whatever reason. He just did it because he wouldn't get in trouble. And then as his city descended into more and more madness, so did he. And for that, I consider him one of, if not the most evil character in the Bioshock series. 
also I consider him to be the most memorable. That one is up for debate, and I'd like to hear your opinion down in the comments section below, but in my opinion, I consider him to be the most memorable character in the series. So ladies, gentlemen, and everybody else watching, let me know what you think of the video down in the comment section below. Also, if you think I missed a character and want to see a part two, let me know some of the characters that you find evil and why down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, would you kindly hit that like button as it helps out the YouTube algorithm, leave a comment because that helps out as well, and also feel free to subscribe and turn on post notifications to never miss a future video or a future live stream. I'd very much appreciate that. If you want to see any additional content or follow me on any social medias, my second channel and all of my social medias are down in the description for you to check out if you'd like to do so. With that being said, thank you all so very much for watching today's video. I greatly appreciate it. Take care, stay safe, and I will talk to you all in the next one.